Chad, let's talk about ramps, pivot bolts, and clickers on the P-Drive system. The why and how of them. Perfect, sure. So there's a lot of different adjustability that we can do to the P-Drive. Uh, we can change the RAM profile, add some weight to the RAM. We can also change the position of the clicker to adjust the P-Drive. If we take the ramp as an example, we can change the profile, the weight of the ramp, and also the clicker position to change calibration. Again, if we take the ramp, the ramp's gonna generate a force uh, that, that we call a shift force that will create the displacement of the sliding flange and then clamp on the belt. Can you get a little bit more into what a shift force is? Yes, so a shift force is a force created by the ramp with the rotation of the pulley to create a displacement of the sliding flange. So if we go a little bit more in details and we take the junction between the ramp and the roller, a steeper angle of contact between those two components will generate less shift force and a smaller size angle will give more shift force on the sliding flange. Chad, what's so unique about the clickers? We had the clickers for so many years on the TRA collection, now we came out with the P-Drive. Can you explain to us like what's the differences, if there's any differences? Yeah, sure, Ken. So if we take just the ramp assembly, which is normally in the P-Drive, we have the ramp assembly, which has an oval shape inside of it. And then we have the little cam right here, which has the five different uh, positions. Every time we go up a clicker, uh, we increase maximum RPM by around 200. Every time we decrease a clicker, uh, maximum RPM are gonna shift down by around 200 RPM. Uh, TRA is pretty similar. We adjust uh, certain the ramp in a certain position to get some different type of RPM depending on condition. You know what, I think I'm gonna stop you right there and we're gonna play a little video so you can explain it a little bit more into detail. The first step is to loosen the bolt. Then after that, we can adjust the clicker. So in that condition, if we're at position number one and we want to go in position number two, we just have to turn the cam. Same thing applies if we want to pass to number two to three. Passing from condition two to three uh, will increase maximum RPM by around 200. Same things apply when we shift to the fourth position. When the selected clicker is done, we can retighten the bolt and get back to riding. Is there an, a, a torque spec for the uh, ramps after you did your adjustment? Yeah, that's a good question, uh, Ken. And uh, the specification is, is in the shop manual. But one other thing that we have to consider is when we adjust uh, the clicker, make sure to adjust all three clicker to the same number or the same position. What could happen if you don't do that? Having the clicker at the same position will just uh, have better performance of the vehicle overall. Does it have any effect on the engagement? Yes, it does, and it depends on the type of ramp that we're using or the type of vehicle that we have. Let's say in racing application, change in cam position or in clicker position uh, is going to have a, a bigger impact on engagement. But let's say on a, on a mountain sled, a change in clicker will have more of an effect on maximum RPM of the sled to keep its maximum horsepower uh, on the power bank. Let's move to the toolbox and talk a little bit more about adding and uh, taking weight away from the P-Drive system. Perfect. Chad, there was one more thing I think we missed uh, on, on e easy adjustments on the P-Drive. Exactly. Uh, that would be uh, changing the weight of the ramp assembly. Uh, this could be done easily by changing the bolt that we have uh, on the assembly itself. So we just have to loosen the bolt. And then we can take another size of bolt, so a heavier bolt. We can also add weight to that bolt if necessary, and then we can rebuild the assembly. Again, all modifications should be done uh, equally on all three ramps. So having a heavier ramp will increase rotational force, uh, which in the end will create more shift force. So they will lower a little bit uh, your RPM in max, uh, max RPM. So by doing this, you're more or less saying with the shift force, are you gonna squeeze the belt a little bit tighter with the sheaves? It depends, you're gonna squeeze more because you have more weight, but the profile will act depending on where you're at on the closure of the pulley. So depending on the opening of the pulley, you'll have different force, but adding weight will create more uh, force on the belt, exactly. And you know what's pretty cool about it also is that you can do this on the side of the trail compared to the other type of clutches that are out in the market. Um, you know, when I go riding, I always have some weight 
uh, that I could adjust right there and then. All I do is open the panel, pull off the co uh, clutch cover, I adjust my weight for the altitude I'm driving at or the type of riding I'm, I'm riding at and it's quick and easy to do. Exactly. Uh, the, other, the other clutches, what I've noticed is you have to kind of take it off the engine and you have to take it all apart to do these fine tuning adjustments. Exactly. What's interesting about the P-Drive uh, adjustability is, like you said, you can do it on the side of the trail. So you can adjust uh, to different conditions and you can adjust also to different altitudes. Another component that we can change uh, in the pulley would be the spring. But like you said, we have to uh, disassemble the pulley. Uh, spring are made uh, in combination with the ramp assembly to create a certain force on the belt. Uh, this will help tune engagement. Uh, by changing spring, we can change engagement, but we can also change uh, maximum RPM. So it's another type of adjustment that we can do on the clutch. We can do little minor things to the clutches. We don't have to tear it apart all the time. With the clickers and the weights, we could fine tune it like that. So I'm assuming that, you know, a little bit at a time is a good thing. Exactly, and we have to understand that there's been a lot of work in doing those calibration for specific type of vehicle. And those small adjustments will help you, like I said previously, uh, adjust for different type of condition. Uh, we have an overall calibration for pretty much everybody, but depending on the condition, now you're able to adjust that on the side of the trail. When you guys are doing your calibration, you're more or less thinking about the general customers and it's just a start point for the customer to begin with, with the fine tuning. Exactly, it's to favor everybody, but like I said, those small type of adjustments will help you benefit the most performance out of your sled in different conditions. Now that uh, you explained on this, uh, how the calibration works a little bit, is there a difference from high altitude to sea level? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, for sure, going high altitude, we have less oxygen, so the, pow uh, the power in the engine will be uh, lower. In that case, we'll have to adjust calibration of the CVT uh, to adjust to that loss in power. With the Summit, if you're going up in high altitude, if you're taking a sea level kit mm -hmm. and you try to use it up in high altitude, what's going to be the difference in that? Your calibration is going to load too much on your belt. So what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to reach uh, those RPM that we're targeting for max power of the engine. So you'll stay in lower type uh, of RPM. In the other way, if you use a high altitude uh, calibration in sea level, uh, ramps are going to be too light. So you'll always be over revving and uh, going into the cutoff of the motor. It's more or less saying the motor's like uh, you have alleys in a pop can and you shake it, there's no load on the engine. The motor's not going to perform exactly to what it's supposed to be, right? Exactly. So peak performance on the engine is around 8,000 RPM. By doing so, uh, we're not fully uh, taking advantage of that, of that power. Now, what happens if, if you're in the trail and there's a lot of customers that don't understand what's a mid-range over-rev? A mid-range over-rev would be if you're going, let's say, at 70 k's or something like that, but your motor, uh, your RPM are at 8,000. That would be, let's say, in a, a trail condition. That being said, you're going, uh, the RPM are way too high for the speed that you're going. That means that you probably have some slippage in the CVT system, so the belt is slipping in your pulleys. Uh, that could be due to multiple factors, one of them being snow intrusion. The belt will fail, correct? Exactly. At the beginning, uh, heat will be generated in the belt because we're not using the belt properly. And after a while, we could get to a failure. Uh, so having o a mid-range over-rev uh, is for sure something that we want to avoid. All right, Chad, I'd like to thank you. And uh, we'll discuss a little bit more in the other videos. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Ken.